Now, I saw you before the game. I don't think I've ever seen an NFL head coach, especially looking for the first win, going over to fans, signing some autographs, taking pictures, smiling. Were you happy? Did you think that <laughs> we are going to win this game? I can feel it. I mean, it, it, it seemed uh, unusual to me. You know, I, I used to get real uptight uh, before a game and on game day, but, you know, it's such a blessing to be a head coach in this league. And there's people that are on that field, and, and they get the experience. Really, my assistants are doing all the work in pregame. So if someone calls me over, you know, I used to ignore it. Now I'll, I'll go over and sign something or say hello. And uh, to me, you know, we're here for them. Without the fans, there is no NFL. So I make sure I try to go out of my way and, and just spend a little time with them. How were you able to keep it together with when the losses were mounting and there's public, you know, the public? How were you able to, to keep that together? Well, you know, we have really good coaches and players in this organization. You know, Mark Dominic's been, been awesome to work with. And uh, that's been good. And then most importantly, my faith. You know, I think I lean on my faith in that there's a plan. And as long as you're doing things right, um, whether it works or doesn't work, you're doing things right, and that's part of the plan. And that's, that's kind of how I go. And the players, a lot of times when, when it's going bad, they, they, there's a term, lose the locker room. But I don't know about that, but sometimes you can see that they might be either sniping or maybe not given 110%. And that has not been the case with the players. How has that been so? Because we have the right people here. You know, I think, uh, you know, these guys have personal pride. They care about each other. You know, we talk all the time about playing for each other. You know, that's a, that's a real strong thing, that accountability word. You know, everybody looks at it in kind of in a, in a discipline or a negative sense. To me, that's, a, that's the glue that holds it all together when you're doing it for the guy next to you. And uh, I think we have that kind of camaraderie on this team. Is it too early to say that your quarterback, Glennon, is going to be your guy of the future? Do you have to wait and see how the season plays out? Because obviously there's going to be a decision It's just him and Orlovsky. You can't go into next year with just that. Are you sold on Mike Glennon? Yeah. I feel really good about Mike Glennon. I, I don't think it would be prudent to, with seven games left to play, it would be prudent to make a, a statement like that. I have all the faith in the world in him, and I believe he's going to do it. Let's let the season play out, though, and let him keep gaining experience. Uh, I think preseason was valuable for him. And then when he got his first start and just, you know, the way we're playing the game now, I think it's all good for him. And you can't ask for a guy who does things more the way you want than Mike Lennon. I mean, he's here early. He, he loves the game. He's a grinder. He does things the way you coach him to do it. I mean, all those things. And he's got leadership. I mean, you talk to the guys. He's, he's not a rah-rah guy, but... When he talks, the guys listen. So he's got all the makings, and, and you know you just need to run it through that test a little bit more and see. But I really, really think he's going to be a good quarterback. With your coordinators, fans, media types that aren't here will say, well, they look at you and they say, you're a defensive guy. This is your defense. Let's go with the coordinator, Sheridan. Does he make the calls? Does he make the calls during the game and you have final say? Is it your defense? Is it Sheridan's defense? Bill makes all the calls. Yep. We put the game plans together, offense, defense, and special teams. I'm involved. My feeling as a head coach is you have real smart people on your staff, and they work with their staff and put together game plans. I look at it as I come in, and I'm kind of the overall quality control. I try to poke holes in it, what ifs, and if I have a feeling after watching tape on my own that hey, maybe we should do this or that, I'll throw it out there. Um, and then during a the game, certainly offense, defense, or kicking game, if I don't think we should do something, I can veto it. But I don't call the game. Mike Sullivan calls it on offense. Bill calls it on defense. And, and Dave wants that on special teams. Now, I make suggestions sometimes. Uh, but having called games as a coordinator, you make those suggestions while they're not up. And when we say up, when you're calling it, it's better to do it in between series. You say, hey, look, they've been doing this. I try to tell them what the other team's seeing and try to help them uh, and then every once in a while, you know, I'll jump on to Mike and say, hey, take a shot. Or, no, make sure we run it here. But I don't tell him the plays, that's for sure. You're well into the second season now. What is the one thing that you have learned running a university and being the head coach of an NFL team? That these guys are grown men, and they want to win just as badly as we do. This is their job just like it's my job. And... Uh, you know, you got to trust them 
to take care of their job and they got to trust us to take care of our job. You know, and it is different. No matter how mature your college team may have been, it's different. You know, these guys got wives, kids, families. They have mo a lot more responsibility than, than 18 to 22 year old college kids. And with that responsibility, I think there's maturity and there's all those, those things that lend to treating guys differently. And, and a couple things happened. We had to establish, you know, what we were going to be about because there was a lot of loose ends that had to be tightened up. But once we got those established, and once we got the people in here that we felt had the same core DNA, and not, we don't want a bunch of you know, tin soldiers that are exactly the same. We want guys that are different, that have personality, but that have the same core values. That's what's important to us. And once you get those guys, you don't need to have all those controls in place because they're going to do the right thing. So then it's more about giving them overriding principles that we'd like to operate under. And, and, and these guys have done a good job with that. So you, you, you have tweaked a few things, it sounds like, from when you first came in to now. Well, sure, but that was part of the plan. I mean, uh, when we came in here, we knew exactly what we were walking into. I mean, it, was, it wasn't your normal situation as far as discipline and things. So we, we needed to do some things that were over the top to kind of bring it back to the middle. You know, they were there. We wanted to be not all the way over here. We wanted to be here, but to balance it out, you had to go over there. So... Uh, I feel good about where we are. I think the understanding, the guys that are on this football team now understand, you know, what we're about, and uh, we just got to get some more wins. Sure. This is my last one. When Gruden was here, he got so much publicity that he woke up at 4.12 or 4 something. A little birdie tells me you're here around 5.30. I would assume that you get up very, very early. Nobody hears about it. What, what, what time do you get up? Is it the same time? <laughs> do you need an alarm clock? Yeah, I do need an alarm clock, without a doubt, because I go to bed late. I, uh, you know, some guys are morning guys, some guys are night guys. I'm kind of both, which isn't healthy. Um, but I need, my, my iPhone is my alarm, and I need that. Trust me, I could sleep. I never have a problem. You know, some coaches have problems sleeping. I fall asleep on my way down to the pillow. Uh, but, so I get up early. I go to bed late. But, you know, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. I love what I do. 26 years of coaching, I haven't been to a day of work. You know, not every day has been great, you know, when they're holding signs that aren't real, uh, you know, aren't, throwing flowers your way you know that's not nice but it it's not work to me it's a it's a passion and I you know I'd be doing it if I wasn't doing this for a living I'd still be coaching so I get to do it for a living I, I consider myself really blessed so what time is the alarm set for coach Greg usually Schneider? five yeah five okay yeah, five fifteen in that area and you also look even healthier I mean not that you didn't look healthy last year you look like you've actually lost weight you look like you're in shape is it because you're not eating are, are you uh Physically doing good? Yeah, I, last spring I made a decision. I, you know, gradually as a head coach, I was head coach for 12 years, and I looked at some pictures of when I first started, and there was a different guy. And, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen all of a sudden. You just get a little sloppy. So I tried to, you know, I have four kids that I want to see all their milestones, and I said, you know what, living this way ain't going to do it. So I tried to take a little better care of myself, and, uh, you know, again, blessed to be doing what I'm doing.